This is a uh, all electronic water level controller for a cooling tower application. It comes in uh, a variety of different um, controls. This is the one with all of the sensors in it. Basically, it's got a fill switch, um, a high alarm switch, a low water cutoff switch, and a low heat cutoff switch. And it's all color coded. All the um, probes are color coded with exactly the same colors as what's in the wiring. And essentially, this gets mounted inside the tower. You can, mount, you can either mount it inside the tower or you can actually build a static pipe outside the tower. And this, these are all already pre-cut. You can cut them in the field if you need to. Basically this, once you mount this mounting bracket to the side of the tower, mount the U-bolts, this, and you put this in the place, this actually ends up in the center of where you want the operating level to be. And these probes are cut so that that fits inside that window. It's got a little breather hole in it so water can migrate up and down inside the pipe. And basically this guy just slides in place, takes two screws, and you run the two screws in it and it mechanically holds it in place. You run the wire now back to the panel. And inside the panel, um, all the color codes are actually all matched up with the color codes on here. And uh, for each one of those functions that's in here, the fill, the high alarm, the low alarm, and the heat cutoff, there's a corresponding relay to them, as well as a whole set of corresponding dry contacts. So essentially, when the light is lit, the relay should fire for each one of those devices. The fill switch is set up on, a three, uh, on an inch and a half hysteresis, so that uh, basically it'll hold that water level in the tower in, inside that inch and a half window. The low water cutoff switch is an inch and a half below that. The high alarm is an inch and a half above that. And then the low low heat cutoff is actually three inches below the fill switch. Um, so the way this works is you take a solenoid actuated valve, and they're all color coded. So the red one goes with the, with the fill. The green is the high alarm, so on and so forth. There's a legend here that you can use to actually understand how to wire the relay. But essentially, you just break the hot leg of the, of the solenoid actuated valve or the hot leg of any one of those circuits so that um, you can basically turn off that device. The neutral leg gets wired right straight to the device. It's all firmware. Uh, it's all low voltage. There's less than one volt and one amp of current to the probe, so you're not going to get deterioration like you get on some controllers. So it's all very low voltage. It's all firmware, and um, there are a couple of hidden features in here. So, for example, if the probes fire out of sequence, the, there's a, an alarm that goes off that's sent to the dry contacts to tell a building automation system essentially that there's been a false firing of one of the pins, or if it runs longer than six hours, it actually has a fault that resets itself after six hours. It tells you that there's a fault in it. The light flickers, the dry contacts are sent a signal, and um, essentially it's all in one enclosure. You mount this outside the tower, the wire comes 50 feet minimum, so you can, you can mount this outside the tower, mount the sensor in the tower, and uh, it's all one system. The nice part about it is that it's all modular construction, so that when or if the PCB, if the PCB fails, you just replace the parts, the PCB part. When the relay fails, the relay is going to fail over time. When the relay fails, you just replace it. Um, by itself. You don't have to replace the whole kit anymore. I tell people it's like buying an airplane. You don't have to replace the whole airplane anymore. You just replace the parts in it. So the controller will last uh, the lifetime of the tower.